don't often show you pictures as a way to introduce subjects, pictures of people at least, but uh, in this case I need to. His name was Charles Sherrington, and uh, I had to pick a neuroscientist to talk about. Um, one, it would be him. Uh, I think he owned a time machine, vaulted into the 21st century, figured out the major issues that had been solved and went back to his time and used the methods available to uh, make an attempt to solve them then. So his methods were necessarily crude because the technology in those days was really crude. But uh, what he was able to figure out was astounding. And when it comes to pain, he figured out two things that are really important. One is pain is a percept. That is to say, there is nothing intrinsic about a stimulus that is painful. It's not as though, it's not as though heat is intrinsically painful. Uh, heat, the quality of heat is the vibration of molecules in the air or on your skin surface. So it's kinetic energy. And so if you talk about the stimulus qualities, you can talk about temperature as a stimulus quality, but you can't talk about pain as being a stimulus quality. We wind up feeling pain as a percept. Okay, fine. That means information is going to have to make it eventually to cerebral cortex for us to feel it as painful. He also recognized there were two types of pain. Uh, that there was a pain that was discriminative, you could figure out quickly discriminative, jeez, I can't write with spit, uh, discriminative. You could figure out what had happened, where it had happened, what was, the, what was the cause of it, and that there was pain that was agonizing, punishing, is what he referred to. That is, it was designed to punish you for having done something stupid so that you'll never do it again. Okay, we'll get back to that. Because as it turns out, there are different parts of cerebral cortex that information about tissue damage has to get to in order for it to be discriminated. Did it happen here or there? Was it hot or was it sharp? Okay, and punishing. We'll see that. Uh, that was an important thing. Second thing, and he offered this in the early 1900s, but people didn't figure this out until well, 1967. So it was about 60 years where it was open to debate. And that is, there are a specific set of somatosensory receptors that he called nociceptors, the ability to detect noxious stimuli. And he's going to define noxious as anything that has or could cause tissue damage, could cause tissue damage. So pliers applied to the finger uh, intense enough could cause tissue damage. Even before it does cause tissue damage, it could. And so you move to uh, get yourself away from those sorts of stimuli. So nociceptors, a specific type of somatosensory receptor that detects noxious stimuli, things that could cause tissue damage. That was the fundamental those were the fundamental contributions of Charles Sherrington.